The Boston Celtics better watch themselves. If Jason, Jalen, and Marcus want any shot at making history in Game 7, they're obviously going to need to lock down and consistently score on Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat. Problem is, they'll almost certainly be underestimating them, considering they've beaten this same team three consecutive times in less than a week. Despite becoming one of four squads to have tied up a series after being down 0-3, doing what 150 teams have never done, which is complete said 0-3 comeback, will be a different animal. I have a feeling Miami could win this Game 7 battle, and based off the fact that everyone outside of the state of Florida are looking to see otherwise, that may be a damn shame. So the pressure has shifted back in Boston's favor, and pressure on its own isn't a bad thing, but not realizing it is the issue. While Derek White's putback is one of the greatest game winners of all time, Miami ended the game on a 15-6 run, not the way Boston wanted to close out the game whatsoever. And by the looks of it, the Celtics don't even believe themselves that they're in a Game 7. After their Game 6 W, here was Tatum's reaction. I'm still like in disbelief. That's crazy. Jalen Brown had an equally shocked reaction with the TNT crew. Do you believe what you just saw out there? Because I don't. Do you believe what you just saw out there? I don't, but we're here. <laughs> appreciate you, man. I appreciate you guys. Meanwhile, this was the opposing coach Eric Spolstra postgame following his team's Game 6 L, who was eager to get Game 7 tipped off immediately. We wish we could tip this thing off right now. Right now, we want to tip this thing off. And let's play another 48 minutes, but we'll wait 48 hours and, uh, and do this thing in Boston. Here was Jimmy Butler, who felt confident enough in the narrative shifting drastically that he guaranteed a Miami W. Um, I'm not going to let anybody quit. I'm not going to let our guys quit. I don't give a damn what happens. We're going to go in there. We're going to win. Thankfully, if you're a Celtics fan, in my one-on-one -on -one interview with Jason Tatum, while I showed you the second part to it in this video right here, which you can go watch after this, in part one of said interview, JT revealed the secret potion that's helping him go off in elimination games. Just take a listen. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I want a drug, don't you a machine? It's not available, if you try it once you will die Your face will melt off, you will troll them and weep over your toilet body Over your toilet body You love to party What's not to love? The world I was on, Big Dagger And but you look like droopy eyed armless children That's how I party, that's how I party I was banging seven gram rocks, that's how I roll Winning, I had one gear, go, epic winning while the Celtics have taken it one game at a time to get the series all knotted up with three games apiece after being in such a vigorous hole, it's still that same mentality that will have to get them across the finish line in Game 7. Despite everyone favoring them to win, if they don't come out with a serious business-like approach on Monday at 8.30pm, you can bet the likes of Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Kyle Lowry will be there to take full control from the jump with a dominant start-to-finish W. If the Celtics want to avoid that outcome, getting overconfident, feeding into the hype that everyone's fine after tying it up, or even the slightest bit of complacency, quite simply can't be present. Boston's routines and mindset leading up to this heavyweight bout must replicate that of a multi-sided winner go home like it is. Jimmy Butler lost Game 7 to Boston last year in a game that came down to one shot. So think or even ponder that he's about to go down easily would be short-sighted and getting ahead of yourself, two mindsets that 9 times out of 10 result in failure. So we've looked at what it'll take from a mental standpoint, from a basketball standpoint, it'll take making more than 7 threes like they did in their last outing, because while Boston's defense can win them games, which is a great sign, I expect Miami to play a fast-paced, 3-point heavy style of basketball. If you aren't aware of Spolstra's masterful game-to-game -game adjustments, then you haven't been watching him throughout his decade and a half of being a head coach. This is a Miami team with an NBA champion as one of their top options in Lowry, another champion giving them all the advice in the world in Udonis Haslam, and a core of talent that's both made the finals and gotten two wins away from achieving the ultimate glory back in 2020. More importantly, they have a two-time NBA champion as their man in charge, whose Game 7 adjustment will center around shutting down number 0, Jason Tatum, after the man dropped 31 last game. 
This entails Jason needs to focus on getting to his bread and butter early and often in terms of getting downhill, and if the Heat block that off, like they'll also attempt to with his perimeter game, then Tatum needs to fully lock in on passing out of early doubles, blitzes in the pick and roll, or late traps as much as he can. We've seen Tatum struggle with that at times in this series, but if he's making lazy passes like he did in those games, Boston won't stand a chance in Game 7. If you don't believe me that the Heat are about to lay everything out there and give it one hell of a shot in this Game 7, then that's your complacency talking, which I'm currently trying to talk out of any, if not every, Boston Celtics organizational member listening to this video. It's important that Boston dictates the tempo from the jump. They don't necessarily have to throw the first punch, although it'd be nice, but they can't be playing careless basketball. They have to value possession at all costs, and they must commit to sharing the rock and getting swing-swing, entry-type movement in the half court. If Miami's allowing you to push the pace, then do it, but I think it benefits them to play solid half-court basketball and to trust the plays that Joe has to offer in his bag. Speaking of which, the play calling for Missoula has been notably exceptional as of late. However, it'll be Joe's mentorship, vibe enhancement, and attention to detail in terms of reminding his team to do both the massive and little things in Game 7 that'll determine Boston's fate. Between the four lines, they'll need big games from both members of the front line, meaning godfather Al Horford needs to keep his feet moving on the perimeter and communication up defensively, and Time Lord Rob Williams must have an elite defensive showing and be a lob threat, roles which he's more than accustomed to fulfilling. Godfather and Time Lord also must be actively engaged in terms of setting fundamental yet impactful big body screens to free up the likes of Smart, Tatum, and Brown. Most importantly, those bigs need to be actively engaged on the glass to grab boards in traffic, with pesky rebounders like Lowry and Butler lurking in the vicinity. How quick and nimble Rob and Al's hands are in terms of snagging those rebounds will be another massive determining factor, with both teams expectedly fighting their asses off with a chance to play in the finals. With that said, the vibes for this Boston team have reached level 100, as this was Tatum post-game. I love this team. I love this team. It was also a great scene to watch this huddle unfold in the locker room, with brothers Jason and Jalen showing their appreciation for one another. Those like Kendrick Perkins, who said very recently that the Jays should have been broken up, are most definitely eating their words. I've never seen Tatum and Brown specifically be on this similar of a wavelength and have their chemistry at this high of a level. Nevertheless, in addition to the Heat ending the game on a monster run like you heard in the intro of this video, to kick off the fourth quarter, Miami also went on an 11-3 run to erase a 7-point Boston lead. So the Celtics showed us all how not to close out a game. But none of that really matters now, because it's all about Game 7, which like Game 6 is going to be a game of inches where it'll all come down to who executes just the slightest bit more. Execution in terms of their game plans, in terms of their shot making, and in terms of their hustle plays will be crucial. Who will win this battle in what could be something we've never seen before take place? I want to know in your opinion, let me know your take in the comments. For more lit NBA content, splash subscribe. This was DFlow, and I'll see you next video.